reading from the Acts of the Apostle. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by <coughs> Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits, crying out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them and received the Holy Spirit, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. <clears throat> Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope, but do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who defame your God good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for his sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. So, First Communion, folks, I want you to know we've had some big, big changes here in church in the last two weeks. Two weeks ago, when the other folks were making their First Communions, we kind of got a handle on how to, how to describe people of different ages in the church, okay? And so, the basic way to describe them is that from the time you're baptized until you make your first communion, you're a little kid. And then you make your first communion, and from then until you make your confirmation, you're a kid. And then after your confirmation, until you start getting your first job, you're a big kid. And then after you get your first job, you're a taxpayer, okay? <laughs> but we're gonna change things around a little bit, why? Because two confirmation people said they didn't wanna be referred to as big kids. They're young adults. I'll go with that. So here's what I just want you to keep in mind. Between baptism and first communion, hear ye, hear ye, the nomenclature has been updated. 
between baptism and first communion, that's when you're a little kid. Now today, from now until you make your confirmation, you're a big kid. After you make your confirmation, you're a young adult, also known as an expiring deduction. After you make your first communion, after you make your confirmation, you're a young adult, and then you're a taxpayer, okay? Little kid, big kid, young adult, taxpayer. So, how come we can say that you crossed over the line today from little kids to big kids? Well, today, when you make your first communion, that's really about you entering into a new phase of your relationship with Jesus. Because once you receive your communion, once you receive the body and the blood of Christ physically into your life, that puts you in a new relationship with Christ. And for about 150 years, let's call it, what happened, there was this guy named Pope Pius way back when, 150 years ago. Some of your parents were old enough to remember. <laughs> Frank surely is. There was a time when you had to wait till you were like 20 to make your first communion. Can you believe it? You had to wait till you were 20 to make your first communion. But then the Pope said, you know what? Younger people, even if they're seven or eight or nine or maybe sometimes six, they have this thing called the age of, they've reached the age of reason. So now you're at an age, you're not little kids anymore, you're big kids. And you're at an age where you know the difference between right and wrong. And now that you've reached this age, you, you have a kind of a sense of what, what does Jesus hope for? What is Jesus saying? Maybe don't do that. And we trust in you in a whole new way. And not there's anything wrong with being a little kid. I think it's my best days were as a little kid, right? So we have great fun. But now that you're a big kid, it's, it's a little bit different, you know? You have a new relationship with Jesus. You probably have to take out the garbage more often now that you're a big kid. You get more chores around the house when you're a big kid. The good news is you don't eat as much as the young adults, which is nice. And your rooms are cleaner than the young adults, right? It's a good stage to be in. It's a really fine stage to be in being a big kid, okay? And one of the things that comes with being a big kid, which you are now today officially, is that Jesus is asking you even more than before to be a good apostle. Apostle? I can't be an apostle. Yes, you can. You're already an apostle. Because Jesus has put into each one of our hearts the desire to be an apostle. What's an apostle do? An apostle enables other people to know God, to love God, and to serve God. It's simple. The job description is really straightforward, to know, to love, and to serve. And what we get today is St. Peter is in each of the readings today, and we get his story as an apostle. And just like his desire to enable others to know, to love, and to serve, every one of us has that built deep into our hearts. Now, we can do with that desire, we can do with that energy whatever we want, the hope is we'll make good use of it. And the First Communion people today are called to be mindful of that in a whole new way. The story really starts today in the Gospel. In the Gospel today, Jesus, this is chapter 15. And you guys, I, I wish there was something I could do about it. Chapter 15, chapters 14 and 15 of John's Gospel are really like grown up, can be very confusing parts of the Gospel. But God trusts that you'll be able to make good use of them. So they're pretty confusing Gospels today, but you're up to the task. In this part of John's Gospel, notice what's going on. It's the Last Supper discourse. It's Jesus telling the disciples the things he wants them to know the most. His time is running out. He's concerned they're not getting it. He looks at them. He looks at the win out the window and sees the crowd gathering against him. And he's got to say what's most important. What's most important? There are seven different ways in today's short passage in which Jesus says, I want you to know me more. I want you to understand who I am. I want you to perceive the relationship between me and the Father. He says that in seven different words today in this passage from the Gospel. In five different places in this little passage today, Jesus says, I want you to love me and I want you to love one another. And if you love me, then you're going to get things right to know, to love. And then there's only one place in which he says, serve, and that is, I want you to keep my commandments. But what we have today is Peter getting the explicit instructions, this is what you are to do to be an excellent apostle. 
Peter, my father has built into you, into your very DNA, the desire to help spread the word, the desire to cooperate with me, the desire to enable other people to know, to love, and to serve. Boom. Peter gets the instructions. Now, First Communion people, you don't get to have dinner with Jesus face to face. What you do get to do, and especially today, is to come to the table, to come to the altar, to receive Jesus. But I get it. It's different today than it was for St. Peter. But every one of you and everyone here has in different ways felt that desire to help other people get closer to Jesus. And then in the order of things comes Acts of the Apostles. Peter has heard that call to be a great apostle. And what we get today in the second reading is Peter's first missionary journey down into Samaria, which is a very scary place. There's a whole big history between Peter's people and the Samaritans, and it's not nice, it's not pretty, it's not a fairy tale, it's ugly. But Peter goes down there with John on the heels of Philip, not Philip the apostle, but Philip the deacon. And what's, what's the upshot? There's, there's unbounded joy in that city when, when Peter's down there because he's enabled others to know, to love, and to serve. So get it. He heard that voice of Christ. He acted on it. He brought great joy to the world. And then the second reading today is the letter of Peter. Was it written by Peter? Eh, maybe. I'd give it even odds. I'd give it, what's that cloud make? What's that horse yesterday? Who won the, who won the Preakness? Cloud compute? What is it, something? Anybody remember? Cloud, cloud compute? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got nothing to do with St. Peter, but it made me wonder about it. <laughs> so now we get St. Peter reflecting on his life as an apostle, as he's getting to be an old man. And what he says is, listen, I heard the voice of Christ call me to be an apostle. Everybody here has heard that in different ways. And then he goes down and not only goes into Samaria, that's just the first stage of the game. And now later, as he's getting to be an old man, he reflects and he looks back and he says, you know what? Life as an apostle has been unbelievably great. Life as an apostle has been superb. It's so much more than I hoped for. And now other apostles, I want you to know that when you go out to be an apostle, be really gentle about it. Be really kind. Share my words with people in a way that they can take in. Enable them to know and to love and to serve. And you have to be really smart about it, and you have to be very, very kind. Where does that leave us on First Communion Day? It's this. First communicants... You're now called in a special way as of today. And don't worry, it's not going to be like when you go to bed tonight, you know, your bed's going to lift off the floor, you're going to have beautiful dreams or angels. No, you're going to bed tonight the same kid who came into church today, just a little bit further down the road in a new relationship with Jesus. And in that new relationship with Jesus, Jesus is saying to you, I want you to be a good apostle. You might not think of yourself as old enough or fit the mold. I want you to be a good apostle to help others to know, to love, and to serve. And first, communicants, I want to ask you, who've been the really good apostles in your life? If you had to name, and I'm going to ask you after church, okay? When we come up here, I want some of the answers. If you had to name two or three people who've really been excellent in your life because they enable you to know Jesus more, to love Jesus more, and to serve Jesus more. I want you to know, and you all, this is wonderful. You, you could only see what I'm seeing. They're all like fighting their hands going up in the air. They all want to tell. They all want to tell about you back there because you've been extraordinary apostles. They wouldn't be here if you weren't great apostles. It's easy. Jesus' dream is unfolding right here, right now. You've been great apostles. You've brought them here. So I want to ask you after church, who've been those people who've been really great apostles for you? And the second part of that question is, for whom are you called to be a great apostle right now? Is there some friend of yours who feels sad? Is there somebody in your life? Do you have a, a relative who's not feeling too well? Is there a kid who's lonely in school? Is there someone who doesn't know how to say her prayers or his prayers and doesn't need you to laugh, just needs you to help? Is there somebody out there, some poor kid, who really needs a little bit more playtime with you, like at IHN or something like that? You're big kids now. It's a beautiful thing. And when you enter into relationship with Christ in the First Communion, 
your relationship with Christ takes a whole new dimension. And they call it the food of the angels and the bread of the apostles. And today you receive your first communion and you're enabled to be apostles in a wonderful new way. So first communicants and everybody else, who've been the great apostles for you? For whom are you called to be a great apostle? That others may know Jesus Christ and love him and serve him. And let me tell you, you're off to a rollicking good start. If you're a grandparent of one of the first communicants, please stand up. If you're a grandparent of one of the first communicants, stand up. Okay. Good for you. So grandparents, grandparents, here's the deal. You, you are the apostles that we have in mind, right? You're the ones who enabled other people to know Jesus, to love Jesus, and to serve Jesus. And because you did what you did with your kids, they're doing it with their kids, who are now big kids, by the way. The thing started with you, and it started with your ancestors before you. So just be aware of the fact that you're part of what's going on in the Bible today, right? You're it. Thank God. So it's not just about hooray for me. It's about, Lord, thank you for giving us the grace to be the apostles you've called us to be. So bravo for you. I'm glad about your kids, but I'm really glad about the grandparents who really are the instruments of God's faith in all of this. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you, grandparents. You're great apostles, okay? And for those of you who are either young adults or taxpayers or tax evaders, no discrimination here. <laughs> Remember, you are doing that work. And it's a three-part story. You get the urge. Maybe you don't think, oh, this is a blast from God, but it is. You get the urge, like in the gospel, you have that sense of this is what I'm called to do. You do what happens in the Acts of the Apostles. You go out and you make disciples. You're an apostle. You enable others to know, to love, and to serve. And then you reflect on it, like in that letter from 2 Peter, and you enable other people to become apostles. So bring it home, friends. Who have been the great apostles in your life? Who have been those really terrific apostles who have enabled you to know and to love and to serve Jesus Christ? And for them, to God, give the glory. And now, for whom, at this stage of your life, are you called to be an excellent apostle? In your words, your deeds, in the way you live your life, in the way you talk about God, the way you treat other people. You're doing a bang-up job. Get specific about it. Who was an apostle for you? For whom are you an apostle now? Let us pray. <clears throat> 